this is Mrs. Murphy and today we're going to go over the process of software engineering. We're going to talk about software engineering and the life cycle it takes to put out an app or a program. We're also going to talk about the design document that aids in planning your project. Well, software engineering is the process of producing software applications, obviously, but it's more than just coding your project. It involves planning, creating prototypes, developing reports, coding, debugging, documenting, evaluating, making sure the end product meets the needs of the user. Now, there's different ways of implementing the software development process. There's the waterfall, evolutionary, rapid prototyping, incremental, spiral, agile. We'll discuss a few of these. The waterfall model is creating a project in phases. The output of each phase is used as the input for the next phase. An evolutionary model is where the developer writes code and then builds upon that code until it's functional. It's kind of this build and fix kind of schema for how you're going to develop your product. Rapid prototyping uses tools that allow the end user to work with prototypes of the program. These prototypes are used to build the final project. An incremental model is when the product is released in phases. Instead of having just one big software release, you have phase one and phase two phase three until the software is completely functional. The spiral model is just a modification of the waterfall model, only it goes through the model several times. There's an evaluation period until the next prototype is released and then it just continues on into the cycle. An agile model is specifically designed for time sensitive products. It's a little less functional. There's a fewer, fewer things to go through. The end user has access to the product the entire time. They can give immediate feedback. Now, as you're going through the planning stages of the software development life cycle, it's really important that you create a design document. A design document is a file that details all the design issues for your application. It's basically your blueprint for your project product. It, it also protects you as a programmer, allows you to communicate better with your end user and find out what exactly they want. Now in creating this design document, the first step you need to do before you do any designing is you need to evaluate and see what products the, current, the customer currently has. What are their needs? What are their wants? What reports do they need to generate? What data do they need to store? This way you'll come up with it, be able to plan a system that works for them. Now the next step is to create some UML diagrams or unified modeling language is what you use to build these diagrams. Now we've already done a few UML diagrams in the database section, those ER models. Those diagrams model the relationships in the data, which you might need in your di design document as well. But there's a, some also some UML diagrams to illustrate what the program's supposed to do and what functionality it might have. Now there's many different types of UML diagrams depending on what you want to show. There's class UML diagrams, object, use case, state, sequence, activity, uh, tons. We're not even going to discuss all of those. Um, let's just show you a few UML diagrams. Now the class diagrams show relationships in each of the objects of the program. They're super similar to the, the ER diagrams that we did in the database chapter. In this diagram, we have an is a relationship. There's a person object and a prof there's also a professor and a student that are both included in the person object. And each person lives at an address. Now class diagrams, they're a little bit more than those ER models of the database section. Instead of just holding data, they might have actions that might occur, such as look at, take a look at the student class. There is an eligible, eligible to enroll is something that that might need to be calculated. So it's not just storing that data, but it could potentially be calculating that data. Another type of these UML diagrams is called a use case diagram. This describes the system's behavior, but from a user's standpoint. In this case, we have some type of grades application. If you're the role of the teacher, you'd be able to record grades, view grades, distribute report cards. Now a student, they wouldn't be able to record any grades. They'd only be able to view them. 
A sequence diagram shows how one class communicates w to the other classes by sending messages back and forth. So a student would submit a registration information. The registration would add the student to the class. The math class would either accept or reject the student depending on their criteria and so on. Now the next step in creating your design document is to determine if you need to store any data. If you have an application that would need a database, you'd need to create some sort of data dictionary as part of your design document. The data dictionary just describes the type of data that would be used in the application. Some applications might allow the user to generate reports. Reports are just information sent to the end user. Could be a digital display of the inventory or some sort of receipt for the cash register. Uh, if that were the case, you'd need to have the user help you in designing these reports. Lastly, you need to have the design flow in the application. Now this is usually done with a flow chart. One of my favorite flow charts is from the Big Bang Theory. It's the friendship algorithm where Sheldon tries to make a friend. Now this can also be done with an application. Where does the project start? What decisions will take the user to their desired screen? One way of really involving the end user is building a prototype of the end product. This can be just a series of images or printouts. This way you can focus on the design of your product without actually coding it. With careful planning, you can build an application that turns out better than my joke of the day. Let's show you my bad example of what not to do in a software application. Starts off with the first panel of how the customer explained what they wanted. They wanted a swing with three seats. The project leader understood that they wanted a swing, but what he envisioned couldn't possibly work. Where were they swinging into the trunk? Then the programmer wrote it. They've got two strings attached to the trunk of the tree just not the branches. The business consultant described this product as something amazing and I love the little sunset in the background. And last but not least, what the customer actually needed, a little tire swing.